Yo, what's going on? What is going on? This is Evan Williams, founder and creator of Health by Any Means Necessary. And um, just wanted to get on here and do my best to explain something in a very uh, clear manner. We need to truly understand the medical definition of a disease. Because if you understand the medical definition of disease and you combine that with the basic understanding of anatomy and physiology, we will come to the conclusion that many of the conditions that we're calling diseases are not diseases, but instead they are merely adaptations. They are merely protective mechanisms. They are merely your body doing its best to survive. Now, that leads us to ask to protect against what? Adapt to what? Survive against what? Because there is another part of the equation. And that's where we get to the true disease. A disease is a dysfunction, an anomaly. It's not supposed to be. Once again, you understand anatomy and physiology and I've written about this in my book called The Blood Pressure Manifesto, uh, The Nutrition Manifesto. These are both free books. I've done a course called The Truth About High Blood Pressure. It's a free course. Uh, the Truth About Diabetes is a free course. Um, I have hundreds of videos uh, on my Facebook page right now. I have hundreds of postings, uh, blog articles. I've been doing this for a long time, uh, five years, but even really longer than that. And I've continuously said over and over and over, Looking at it from an actual physiological sense, we understand that when blood pressure increases, the question shouldn't be, what should I do to get my blood pressure down? The question should be, why is my blood pressure high? What is my blood pressure responding to? Because the first question of what do I need to do to get my blood pressure uh, down, ignores the fact that your body is an adaptive, adaptive self-healing, self-repairing, and extremely inte intelligent. When you ask that question, you're ignoring all of that. However, when you ask the question of what is my blood pressure responding to, you understand that your body is constantly in a state of making the next best and intelligent move. Uh, making the best move for survival, and if it can survive, then the next move is to thriving. With blood pressure, we're simply talking about the pressure against the arterial walls. If there is a blockage in the 60,000 miles of blood vessels you have, 60,000 miles, let's explain that again. Uh, planet Earth has a circumference of 25,000 miles. Planet Earth have a, has a circumference of 25,000 miles. You and everybody you know has blood vessels that will stretch 60,000 miles long. This means that your blood vessels can wrap around planet Earth 2.5 times. Now, in the situation where there is a blockage, where there is a thickening of the arteries, when there is a decreased blood flow <clears throat> because of inflammation, or there is an increase in viscosity because of the actual thickness of the blood, what should your body do in order to continue to profuse the 37 trillion, trillion with a T, 37 trillion cells that you have in your body? What should your body do? Should it just tap out and give up? Or should it increase the blood pressure to get the blood to where it needs to go to those cells by any means necessary? Once again, your body is constantly making the next best move for survival. Now, having that blood pressure incredibly increase it's not healthy but it is the next best move as your body sees it because it understands that those cells those 37 trillion cells all have needs they all need nutrients they all need oxygen from the nutrients and oxygen they're going to uh, create a byproduct of waste which needs to be excreted as well and when we look at diabetes we've been uh the way we've been taught about diabetes is that this is merely something where your body no longer responds to insulin for some reason. We don't know why. Or your body no longer 
uh, produces enough ins insulin for some reason, not clearly, not sure why, and you now have an elevated blood sugar. This is the way that we're mostly uh, taught about diabetes. You're also taught that it's chronic and progressive. There's nothing you can do to reverse diabetes. You just got to deal with it. Uh, get started on metformin. Uh, metformin is going to get to the point where it's not enough. We have to increase it to two times a day, uh, 500 milligrams BID two times a day. That's not going to be enough. Now we're going to keep you in the metformin and add in a soft on urea. It's probably going to be gliparide or glimmer, gl glimepiride. Uh, it's going to get to the point where that medication is not enough. Now we start you on insulin, three units, five units, 10 units, 20 units, on and on and on and on and on. And to the point where they come and tell you that your kidneys are no longer functioning properly. From that, we will now have to move you on to the dialysis clinics because your, your kidneys are no longer functioning properly. So that's the way it's been explained. But once again, if we're talking science, if we're talking physi physiology, we understand that your insulin, your cells, the insulin receptors on your cells are not just uh, randomly deciding to not respond to insulin. This, once again, is the next intelligent move for the body. Because your cells are already stuffed, they're at full capacity with glucose because you are, we are eating six times a day, uh, we're eating every two to three hours, the glucose in the cells are at full capacity, the cells no longer have any more uh, room for it. Do you expect your body to continuously allow glucose into an overpacked cell? Do you know what cell proliferation is? Do you understand that insulin is a uh, anabolic steroid? It's a growth hormone. Cells plus growth is not something you want. Growth in a human, uh, in an adult human, is not something you want. This leads to cancer. This leads to the rapid the cell, the, uh, deterioration of the cells. This leads to gangrene. This leads to uh, amputations. This leads to blindness. That leads to kidney disease. Therefore, your cells are making the most intelligent decision they can at that time. They are down-regulating the insulin receptors, keeping the blood glucose uh, in the actual bloodstream, and they're directing it to the kidneys. And the kidneys are now going to excrete that out of your body. Why? because it's the next best move. Hopefully, your body's hoping that you will no longer take in foods that are gonna break down so fast. Your body's hoping that you will no longer eat foods that are gonna cause such an increase in blood sugar. But what do you get told from the medical industry? It runs in your family, it's gonna happen no, way. no, no matter what, it's gonna happen. Uh, this is learned helplessness. There are teaching you and educating you to be helpless. They are teaching you and educating you that you didn't have anything to do with this. You're black. What do you expect was going to happen? Your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your, your diabetes, eh, it's going to happen. That's what you're being taught. And when you're being taught that and you're living out of a framework, a mental framework, where you've already been conditioned to believe that you're going to be sick. You're going to be sick. You're going to be sick. Everybody's saying it in your family. Mama got it. Daddy got it. My brother got it. We all know it. I used to say it as well, too. I used to believe it as well. So if you're already starting off with that type of foundation and you're going throughout life believing that you don't really have too much control over your health because it's been clearly laid out that it's going to happen. When you look around your community, you look around your family, everybody's popping some kind of medication. Everybody's doing injections. We know this to be a reality. Therefore, when it comes time to get that diagnosis, you're not going to be shocked or you're not going to be that shocked. You're not going to be as shocked as a person who was always raised in a way where they were told that health is their birthright. If you're raised in a way in your environment and everybody around you is taught that health is your birthright and anything that varies off of that is an abnormal, an abnormal anomaly, <laughs> you're going to be shocked as hell when a doctor runs, comes in the room and say, hey, you're diabetic. You'll be like, what? Hell no, that, that can't be. However, unfortunately, in our community, when we are told this, mm, yeah, all right, not too surprised. And you need to understand that we are, we have been taught that by the medical institution. Now, I don't spend too much time on the blame, the pointing the fingers, because now that we know that to be the truth, what do we do now? Because we're not gonna just say, continuously repeat that over and over and over. You miseducated me, you miseducated me. Yeah, that's the truth, it's the fact. And you shouldn't really be surprised if you look at the timeline here in America as it pertains to African Americans and medical institutions. You shouldn't really be surprised. But besides, that's besides the point. Now that we know that to be the truth, what do we do? 
we got to find out what's really going on. What is the true disease? And this leads me back to what I started off saying. High blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, obesity, those are adaptions. Your body is adapting to an invader. Your body is, your body is adapting to irritants. Your body is uh, adapting to an, an assault, an attack. What is the attack? The standard American diet. Your body is adapting to the true disease, which is the standard American diet, which is a dysfunction in nutrients. If you look at what real foods are, whole foods, we understand that when you take in something that's real, like an apple, that one apple, that one kale leaf, that one celery, whatever it is you're eating, that one item of food comes equipped with the whole entire nutritional community, whether it be potassium, sodium, magnesium, uh, phytonutrients, fiber, whatever it is, it's going to come equipped with a ratio of nutrients that is going to empower you versus make you sick. However, when we look at processed foods, they don't work like that. And this is the reason why they got us all spooked out about salt. That, that's why they have us all spooked out about sodium. And this is why they can sell us foods that have quote unquote low sodium. Because we've been taught once again that sodium is a huge issue. No, they are not telling you the whole entire truth. So the salt that you're thinking about, you're thinking about the salt on your table, right? Well, you need to understand that when it comes to sodium consumption in America, 77% of that sodium consumption is coming from processed foods. It's coming from foods that are in boxes, cans, bags. It's not coming from your table. That only makes up about 6%. The sodium that's a problem is the sodium that has been chopped up, cut, cooked, isolated, and put placed in a bag. Because sodium, you're not going to find sodium in nature in this discombobulated ratio like you find it in processed foods. When you look at sodium in, in nature, you're not going to find sodium in a higher ratio than potassium anywhere in nature. The only place you might be able to find that is with shell food, shellfish food. Other than that, there's no other food item in nature, that's real, that has a higher ratio of sodium than potassium. Why? Because sodium and potassium go back like four flats on the Cadillac. They're always together. They're always together. So it stands a reason that nature might have known what it was doing when it created these foods. So when you're taking these foods, the way the foods break down, the way the foods pr provide nutrients and health, you are now engaging in a mutually beneficial relationship. You are now engaging in a relationship where the foods are actually going to empower you. The foods are actually going to make you healthy. However, when you're eating man-made foods, processed foods, the standard American diet, that is simply an extension or the nutritional version of what I would consider colonization. You are taking in foods that have no, no intentions on whatsoever on making you healthy. No intentions whatsoever. Now, they'll lie and tell you that now it's made with real vitamin C. Now it's made with no sodium. Now made with calcium. If your food is talking like that, if your food has the ability to brag and wear a label talking about how much sodium and calcium they got, you should run away. Because whole foods, real foods, they don't need to brag like that. <laughs> they don't need to walk around talking about what they got in it. Because their body of work has spoken volumes for millenniums, for, for, for forever. There's no, there's no, uh, you're, not, you're not uncertain about the effects of an apple, kale. Like, you don't have questions about these things. However, these new foods and these new medications that they're making up, you are, you, you, they're testing it on us. <laughs> you know, it's being tested on you. So when it comes to the reason why these things exist in our community, such as the uh, preventable conditions, they're not disease, they're adaptations, the things that they're ad adapting to is the daily insult of the processed foods that we're taking in. What else do you expect your body to do? Your body's intelligent, it's self-healing, self-repairing, it's self-regulating. Your body is going to do what it can do to survive and thrive. It's going to do what it can do. However, if we are taking 
these adaptations as diseases and we're being meet, educated in a way where we are told that we need to fight against our blood pressure fight against our high blood glucose fight against our high cholesterol okay there's a little bit of truth in that but there's enough there's enough uh, of a lie in there where it throws the whole entire equation off because if you're taught that it's evil and it needs to be brought down by any means necessary then you will take an actual chemical to bring it down however if we understand that what you are treating as an enemy is actually an ally because that's what it comes down to. Your high blood pressure, if your blood pressure doesn't increase, guess what? You die right then and there. You're going to go into what they call hyperfusion, which is going to lead to ischemia, and that's going to place you in a condition where they call shock. This is where your blood pressure, your blood in general, has stopped circulation. If your cells did allow glucose to insert, enter the, the, uh, the cells whenever they felt like it, you die right then and there. This is what I'm saying. So. Instead of allowing that to happen, the body's going to try to make the next best move for survival. The medications are going to say, forget all of that stuff he just said, <laughs> and let me come in and block this receptor. That way, even though the heart wants to contract harder, even though the blood vessels want to constrict, even though all the, the body wants to do all those things, the medication is going to be like, phooey, forget all that. Decrease dilate slow down your the medications coming in the doors they're kicking in the doors two guns up and they're hitting everything they're moving there's no balance there's no reciprocity there is no uh communication it's doing what it won't however the reason why when you start eating healthier when you start moving more and this has been a pretty big conversation this week for me when you start eating more uh when you start eating healthier and you start decreasing and cutting out the processed foods guess what starts to happen if you're on medications you start to feel weird maybe your blood pressure is a little too low and that's why you're feeling lightheaded maybe your blood sugar is decreasing a little too low and that's why you're feeling shaky well why is that happening it's happening because you're eating healthier and the combination of a healthy diet plus the medications it's lowering both of those things too much. This is what happens. However, you never have to worry about that if you continue to eat the standard American diet. If you continue to eat the standard American diet because the medications you're prescribed when you get diagnosed with those conditions, you're not going to experience those hypotension and hypoglycemia as long as you continue to eat the way you've already eaten. So when you get prescribed those medications, you're getting prescribed the medications with the assumption that you're going to continue to do the very thing that led you to get the condition in the first place. As long as you continue to do that, you don't have to worry about those things. We don't have to worry about decreasing medication. We will now have to increase the medication every six months because the, the, the disease is truly progressing at that point. Hope y'all get what I'm saying. Hope y'all get what I'm saying. So, the disease itself is the standard American diet. That's my point. The juices, the sodas, the box food, the cans, the bags, uh, the artificial ingredients, all of those. These are the things that are causing us to take medications at such a high rate, um, be diagnosed with diseases at such a high rate, uh, be the number one population in Dallas clinics, have Dallas clinics specifically mainly at a high level in our communities, have amputations heart attacks, heart disease, it's all because of the food. This is not something that you just innately have. Your creator or however you got here, did not send you here, cursed and said that, you know what? When you get 35, 38, 40, I'm just gonna make you sick because I don't like y'all like that. Nah, it don't work like that. But that's the narrative you've been given. That's the narrative we've all been given. So now that we know that, now what do we do? Because I'm more on that side. I'm about offense. I get it. I know what happened. Now what do we do? The standard American diet is nutritional colonization. As long as the colonizer is living within you, the colonizer is causing, calling the shots. The colonizer is not going to make you healthy. The colonizer is not going to empower you. The colonizer is going to use you as much as it can 
deplete you of your resources until it's time to drop you and move on to the next one. That's what the standard American diet is. The, the answer, as you all know, fasting is my gospel. Fasting is everything. And we need to get back to implementing a fasting lifestyle because it was always one of our basic principles. In addition to that, we have to get back to eating whole foods. Now, I understand I say whole foods. Here at Health Vitamin Necessary, we recommend that you eat 70 to 80 percent plant based whole foods. Whatever that 30, that 20 to 30 percent is, needs to be clean. Now, I know I get a lot of pushback from my vegan brothers and sisters and my vegetarians, but you need to understand that my role that I created for myself is to be the mass, the usher of this mass exodus away from the actual processed foods. Once we get into this land of whole foods, yeah, we deal with it later. But as far as right now is going back and forth debating about veganism or not, that is a tribal war. Why would you fight a tribal war <laughs> when y'all are both being attacked by the nutritional colon colonization? That doesn't make any sense. Let's click up, let's link up, and let's get rid of the nutritional colonizers, get back to whole foods. Then we can sort it out from there amongst each other. All right, so um, that's it. Share this video. Spread the word. Got any questions? Comment. I gotta go. Ahaj Aleya. Love y'all. Peace.